and welcome to the Melody Renovation Project episode three. So in this episode, <laughs> in this episode, we're going to go through all the flooring we did in the living space and all the painting we did in the living space as well. In the living room, we have the living room feature wall, which is what we showed you in the last episode, and that had the three different colors: the cool melon, the French Riviera, and the Aqua Bell. Then we took that Aqua Bell and then we put it in that guest room area um, as one big feature wall. So that was really, really cool. And then with the rest of the space, we just normal ceiling paint all throughout. Um, and then also that Miss Universe that we applied through all of the walls. Oh, and just so you know, we also always use low sheen for the walls. It just hides scuffs a little bit easier. It has a little bit of a shine to it, but it's not so in your face. We typically reserve that high gloss look for trims, doors, um, things like that. beautiful laminate floorboards that we're going to be laying down here and across the whole space this week. And do you want to walk us through what the process normally is for laying floorboards? Yeah, before you start, have all your tools available and really easy access, but always wear gloves and also a P2 mask. Whilst ripping it up, you know, things can be in the carpet, there's also nails, um, it's real dusty, so just always mask up um, to protect yourself. The process is you start from the corner, rip off the carpet, grab a carpet knife, which is one of these special little guys. Yeah. If you don't have one of these, you can just use a nice uh, sharp standing knife. Yeah. But just be really careful and don't step on it or hurt yourself in the process. Um, pull it from the edge, cut it along so they're not like massive rolls where you can't handle. Yeah. Or I can't handle it anyways. I mean, we're stronger than we look, but we're not all muscle. But it makes it easy to dispose and, and move around in the place. My recommendation is kind of keep the small rolls so you kind of keep the dust and the dirt all together. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So you rip all that off. There's also some underlay, so you want to fold that and rip that off as well. And along the edge, the way that the carpets are, are stuck together is having carpet tracks. So they look like this. And what you've got to do is just go around the edge um, and, and pull these out. But just be really careful because they're just full of nails. So all as I'm saying, wear gloves all the time. Yeah. Um, and wait, there's more. So we have a range of tools that we also use to get off those carpet tracks. So grab the chisel. Normally the easiest way to get it is kind of hit where the main nail is onto the ground and it'll lift it up and kind of like jack it up a bit and keep going. Um, for safety reasons as well is have like a bin or a box close by. So all your um, excess waste or anything is just thrown away or in a corner so you're not having it everywhere and someone could step on it. The next steps really is that we're just going to keep going. Uh, over the rest of the living room space, we're going to keep taking off the carpet, roll it up for the skipping that we're going to be organising later this week as well. Um, rip off all the carpet tracks and then by the end of this week, you can start seeing those beautiful laminate floorboards. Of course, there's underlay underneath as well just to make sure you've got that good sound insulation in between the floors because we're, we're in an apartment building at the moment. 
you really want to get your insulation right and one of those things is just to make sure that you've got underlay underneath uh, your floorboards. send it back, you know, sweep the walls or just sugar soak them if they're really dirty so that they won't show through when you do paint them. So always do your wall prep before you paint. Yeah, it is so boring. Oh, sorry. I find it really boring. But you gotta do it. You gotta do it. Put on some really good music and yeah. dance away while you do your wall prep. Yeah. Get involved and... Get involved, I think that's age. <laughs> <laughs> Get involved, prison. <laughs> well, I'll do all this wall prepping next time. <laughs> Part of the original scope is that Jill actually did want to replace them with mirrored uh, sliding wardrobes. Mm. So that's what we did. In terms of the results, oh my goodness! Yeah. The moment you walk in with those mirrored wardrobes, it just looks amazing. Opens up the space. Yes. The, the, the way that the light. I was going to say the way it bounces the light. Yes. Wow. Yes. Yeah. Really, really cool. So when you look at a non-mirrored sliding door, especially for a smaller space. Um, you kind of, you don't really think too much about it, but once you put mirrored sliding doors there, it's like, whoa, it actually makes a huge impact. But we definitely suggest that if you can, if it's within your budget, um, that needs to be high on the list if you are renovating an older place. Yeah. With floorboards, you know, you always have the right tools as well. There's actually a laminate floorboard installation kit you can purchase. Um, we also need a little mallet as well. Um, with, with floorboards, they always give you instructions on how to lay them. So each floorboard is slightly different, so always read the instructions. Um, if you're not really sure, bunning, the bunning staff member are great. They can also give you some tips. Mm -hmm. um, there's plenty of YouTube videos out there as well that would actually show you and recommend how to lay floorboards. What was really great with this project is we used what was called a laminate cutter. Yeah, so I think <laughs> yeah. this is going to be so amazing because it's nice, clean, straight cuts. You don't have a whole lot of sawdust. Just think of a guillotine that you would cut paper with, but it does flooring. And it was also good when we had to start and stop, mm -hmm. um, but we didn't have to always carry the tools around with us. It was just this one amazing lambic guillotine oh. cutter. <laughs> For this project, we didn't remove the skirting boards. So yep. you have the skirting board and then you have your floorboards. There is a little tiny gap that you need to leave for the expansion. Mm -hmm. What a Scotia does, you can actually just install it in between and it gives you that nice finished complete look so you don't see where your floorboards end. But there's always two options. Um, some, some, some people actually like to remove all your skirting boards and install your floorboards all the way to the edge to the wall and then reinstall your skirting boards. We prefer to not remove the, skirt, the existing skirting board because mm. it could potentially damage the wall. These ones were in relatively good condition, um, so we didn't want to do anything to them that would potentially break them, snap them, cost you more money unnecessarily. We are trying to stick to a really strict budget, yeah. so if you don't need to do it and it's in good condition, then we won't even touch it. 